Welcome to English Nomad in Oz. My name's Mike and this is episode four. Uh, today we're going to do a breakdown of my bug out bag, my emergency survival kit. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about the bag. The bag is a backpack. It's made by a company called Maxpedition and the model is the uh, Gry Falcon. It's uh, the large, one of the larger bags that Maxpedition have in their range and um, it's perfect for packing everything that I need to pack or what I believe I need to pack for an emergency scenario. This bag weighs 70, 17 kilos which for my American friends is around 37 pounds. So it's uh, constructed from high quality materials, all well stitched together, box stitching on all, all the eye stress points, high quality items such as YKK zips, really good molly webbing all the way around different places to attach stuff and um, it's also got the uh, metal frame inside so that it supports the weight of the bag or distributes the weight of the bag more evenly when you're wearing it. It's also got the waist straps, really good um, padded straps for the, uh, for the shoulders. All in all, I'm really, really impressed with the quality of this bag. So uh, what have I got inside it? Well, first of all, let's do the outside. On the outside I have, you can see, a sleeping bag. Uh, this is my um, Big Agnes sleeping bag. It's an American sleeping bag. I keep it in a stuff sack, which is waterproof, and that's uh, basically to protect the uh, sleeping bag from getting wet. And just get it out. It's a very lightweight hiker's sleeping bag, so it's uh, down filled. It packs up to a really small size, which makes it perfect for, uh, for packing in this uh, backpack. From memory, I think it's the Ranger 15 Fahrenheit sleeping bag which for Australian weather is, per is perfect for all year round. In fact, if anything, it's too hot in the summer, but perfect for the winter months. It's what they call a mummy bag. So it has the shape of the, uh, the sarcophagus that they used to put the mummy in. Really good sleeping bag. On the outside also here, I have my Kyber Becker BK9 knife. Now this is a heavyweight 9 inch blade. It's a full tang knife. Really, really solid knife. Very heavy. It's what I call a chopping knife. It's not really for doing fine work. This is more what you would use for processing firewood, chopping through bush, um, that kind of activity. It's, it's a heavy duty knife, it's not really designed for doing whittling and light fine work. Very, very good knife. Highly regarded by uh, people within the knife community. On the other side I've got some carabiners. I carry a few carabiners, that way if I need to uh, lash something up or set up some kind of pulley system I can use carabiners to do that. So let's start breaking this down and have a look at what we've got inside it. So in the first compartment at the bottom of the bag I have my fire kit. My fire kit basically consists of everything that I need to be able to start a fire. So I've got a couple of lighters, I have a fire steel, this one's a, a light my fire fire steel, really good ferro rod, gives off really good sparks. 
I have some, um, some fire starting material. This is wadding, which is uh, metal polish wadding. I only need to pull off a small amount of that, fluff it up, hit it with some sparks from the, uh, from the ferro rod and, um, and it, it bursts into flames really, really good. This is petroleum jelly coated cotton wool balls in this tin and I've got some fat wood. Fat wood is basically um, a pine that's got a lot of resin in it. So it burns and burns for quite a while. Great for um, kindling to start a, a fire, to get the fire started. In this, I have my Sea to Summit kitchen equipment. It's actually just my cutlery, a uh, couple of dishes. Uh, that's a, a bowl which opens up, folds flat. I have a cup. Again, that just pops flat when you're done with it. Cutlery, knife, um, spatula, fork, spoon, another lighter, salt, pepper, bit of oil, and some cleaning stuff so I can keep all this stuff clean. I have batteries in those pockets there. So we'll move on to this pocket here. In here I carry a pair of sunglasses and a pair of safety glasses. Whenever you're doing any kind of um, processing of firewood it's always a good idea to wear safety glasses. The last thing you want when you're out in the bush is, uh, is to get some bits of wood in your eye um, cause irritation could even cause uh, an injury to your eye. So in this pouch here I have my toolkit. This is all the uh, tools that I would need um, while I'm out in a, an emergency situation. So this is my Spyderco Manix 2XL. It's uh, my main folding knife. It's extremely sharp as a really really good um, handle you know you can hold it in a lot of different ways to do um, sharpen sticks to um, to make pegs anything that you want to do you can really hold it in a, in a few different ways um, and it's a locking knife it's got a really really positive locking action really quality knife that one I have another fire steel there and I believe in redundancy, so I've got lots of stuff that I've repeated. Multi-tool, this is a leather man surge. It has uh, pretty much all the basic stuff that you need in a multi-tool. I've got the screwdriver bits for that. Two lots, different ones, Allen keys, Phillips, flat. I have my two knife sharpeners. This one here is a pocket sharpener. It has a stone on one side, which is diamond, and it has a, a rod, a ceramic rod on this side. It's really, this one's just for carrying around on your person, so that if you do need to just put a quick edge on a knife, you've got something to do that with. This one here is a bit more sophisticated. This is the, uh, the work sharp <coughs> pocket knife sharpening system. It has the guides so that it maintains that correct angle when you're sharpening your knife. There's a rough diamond stone on one side, a smooth one on the other side, and then you've got the ceramic on the top here. And there's different, you turn it, there's different ones for doing fish hooks and one for doing serrated knives. And you've even got a small one there, a small rod for doing small items. And then you've got the leather strop for stropping your knife afterwards. So that's the uh, toolkit. This little packet here 
is just uh, a writing kit. It's waterproof paper and water resistant pens. What that means is that the ink won't run on the paper and the paper won't disintegrate if it gets wet. So it's great for leaving notes for people on vehicles or if you need to leave a note somewhere you know that the, the message isn't going to get lost because the paper disintegrates and the ink runs. This is my Frunite T14. This is a torch. It's a single triple A cell battery torch. It's got several settings. On that setting I believe they call that the Firefly setting and each time you press it it goes a little brighter. Um, and you've got a strobe mode as well. It's a really good little torch. I believe it's around 800 lumens but I'd have to google it and find out. I'm pretty sure it's around 800 lumens which for a torch that size is pretty impressive. Okay, we'll get into one of the bigger compartments now. So here we have my toiletry kit. This just has all my basic personal hygiene stuff. So toothbrush, toothpaste, razor, mouthwash, wet wipes, I have some soap, shower gel, hand sanitizer, air wax, I mean you've got to look good after all, even at the end of the world. So that's uh, all I basically need in there for personal hygiene. This is my everyday knife, this is a Gerber Bear Grylls um, Pro. It's a smaller knife, still full tank, um, very sharp, it has, um, it has a, its own fire steel there, a whistle, and its own sharpener. It's a, actually a really good knife, it's what I class as my everyday beater knife when I'm camping. Um, I don't particularly care for the orange flashes on it, I think that looks a bit gay, but I mean it was cheap and it's, it's not a bad knife, it's made by a good manufacturer, good steel, does the job. I have some canned fish. These are glow sticks, so if I get stuck um, and I need additional light or I've no power left in my torches. I've got some glow sticks. Cordage. This is paracord. Um, I'm not sure how much is there. It's quite a few meters, but enough for general tasks around the campsite where you might need some strong cordage. Pair of leather gloves. Yep, that's everything. So into the biggest compartment now. I've got quite a lot of stuff in here, so let's get into it. Right, so this is most of my uh, bulky items are in here, but we'll start off in this compartment. I have a set of first aid books, so that if I uh, need to administer first aid, I've got some um, some reference materials. I have done a first aid course, but it's always handy to have a, um, some books. And to go with that, I have a first aid kit. It's in a waterproof bag, and there's everything in there for most emergency situations. So I've got bandages, I've got um, splints, I've got plasters, I've got dressings, um, all kinds of different ointments and eye wash and antiseptic wipes and basically everything that you're likely to need to treat that, uh, an injury or um, you know, cuts or abrasions in the field. <clears throat> um, next we have this which is the platypus water filtration system. This is uh, basically has two bags. One you fill up with your dirty water 
you run it through a hose into a filter and that then gets collected into a second bag which is then your clean drinking water. This will take water from any fresh water sources and, uh, and basically turn it into safe drinking water. Um, very, very uh, important thing to have in your survival kit in some way to uh, process water you may find and make it safe to drink. This is my Big Bertha, Big Agnes, sorry, not Big Bertha, I don't know what I'm thinking of. Um, mattress, it's inflatable, it sits inside the sleeping bag, and the sleeping bag has its own little envelope which this sits, goes into when it's inflated, so it's one complete integrated system. It's about 40 mil thick um, and it's also insulated so if you're sleeping straight on the floor um, you, you're going to um, stay warm. It's quite easy to inflate, it inflates with just a, a bag that you fill up with air, put a knot in it and push the air in. This is part of my sleeping system as well, this is the Sol Escape Bivet. Now, this, what this does is this gives me an additional layer of insulation. It also provides a waterproof uh, barrier between the elements of my sleeping system so that it stays dry. It's, um, it's a really useful thing to have. So if I was sleeping on the floor and the floor's wet, I would put this on as well and that would make sure that the moisture doesn't wick through the sleeping bag. My emergency shelter is my DD tarp, it's a 3 meter by 3 meter tarp. I've got all of the ropes in there as well so that I can set up a makeshift tent or a shelter of a uh, timber frame um, and because it's camouflaged it's fairly stealthy so I can cover it with branches and more twigs and leaves and what have you and be fairly incognito. It's, uh, it's a really good tap and, um, and you definitely do need to have some shelter from the elements when you're uh, in a survival situation. So uh, onto this, this is a thermal pouch and that is basically a pouch which opens up as its own little spoon um, for these meals. So these are freeze dried backcountry cuisine meals. Uh, they have a very long shelf life. So this one's 2020, this one's 2018. This one's 2018 as well, so I've got roast chicken, creamy carbonara, I've got some porridge and I've got enough meals there to get me through three or four days with the fish um, until I can find uh, more food supplies. Now on to my main torch, this is a 3D cell mag light, it's got a, an LED globe in there. Um, although I do have a conventional globe as well. Um, a lot of people probably wonder why I have such a big bulky torch when you can get much smaller compact LED torches now which are more efficient in terms of the power they use, the lighter and throw out more light. Well I have this for two reasons, it's not just a torch, it's personal protection. Um, I consider this to be a weapon as well. Uh, if someone was to attack me one smack around the side of the head with this and uh, they'd be having second thoughts about doing it again. So this is my uh, silky saw. This is the uh, big boy saw. This is perfect for chopping firewood or if you were making a, a shelter and you needed to um, chop wood up to, um, to get lengths of logs that are suitable for, um, for building a shelter. This is the perfect tool for that. It's got really sharp teeth and will rip through wood very, very quickly. Um, perfect tool for uh, bushcrafting.
in this bag here which is just held on here with straps I have my cook system I'm using the uh, jet boil flash the jet boil flash um, has everything that you need in the cooking pot to, uh, to, to cook So that sits on there like that and this is the base for it and uh, it's really really efficient because it's got the wind protection it will boil, um, it holds a litre of water but it will boil uh, enough water for a meal and a cup of coffee in around um, two minutes, it's really really efficient. I have a couple of these now, this is the one that I have in my bug out bag but I have a bigger one called the Sumo which I use for camping, general camping. And finally the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle. This is my backup water filtration system. This is the Sawyer Mini. It's uh, basically it's a, a water filter. Um, with a drinking straw you can either use it straight out of the source if you wanted to drink water out of a puddle or out of a, out of a bucket of water that you have found you can do that or you can filter it and put it into a, into a bottle um, and do it that way so, uh, so that's, uh, that's a, a backup filter if something was to happen with that I've got a backup as well so I like the idea of having some redundancy in key items. So that's, uh, that's it for the uh, breakdown of my bug out bag. So what do you think about that? Um, do you think there's anything missing? Do you think uh, I need to um, take something out? Um, I'd be interested to hear some um, some of the thoughts out there on, uh, on what you think about this and uh, so please comment below and share this video and um, subscribe because I'll have more videos in the future on using this gear I'm actually going to do some um, I'm going to do some trips in the next few months where I actually go out in the field and live for two or three days just on the contents of this bag so uh, that would make some um, some interesting uh, viewing for the YouTube community out there so until next time this is English Nomad in Oz signing off peace out